Thank you for joining us for tonight's presentation, The Steps to Life Insurance Protection. I'm David Balin and will serve as your host for tonight's program. With me today is our presenter, Candace Conley, Vice President of Life, Life Sales from Nationwide Insurance. Candace's presentation will last approximately 20 to 30 minutes and be followed by a question and answer session. To ask a question, click on the chat button on the small Join Me toolbar at the, at the top of the screen and type your question anytime during the meeting. The chat button is the second one from the left and it looks like a little bit of a, a balloon next to the phone. I ask that you keep your questions general in nature as we will not be able to address individual concerns during the presentation. Candace has eight years of experience in the life insurance industry. She currently helps clients in the areas of life insurance protection and building wealth. She's also certified in long-term care, certified as a long-term care consultant. With that, let me turn it over to Candace. Thank you, David, for inviting me to join you this evening. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I'm very excited about today's conversation and you are going to learn a lot and it's going to be useful and resourceful to you. So thank you so much for tuning in with us. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, as David said, I've been with Nationwide for quite some time now, for the past six years, but I have to get this out the way, and you should be very familiar with it already. So you should be familiar with our friendly jingle, and that is Nationwide is on your side. Now, I'm not the best singer, but hopefully you have that jingle in your head, and I want to share with you a couple things about Nationwide that you may not be aware of. We have been in business for about 85 years, so we have experience helping families and business over the course of these 85 years. We are also a Fortune 100 company. We help families in the space of annuities, mutual funds, retirement plans, as well as life insurance every day. And since the year 2000, Nationwide Insurance Foundation has committed more than $345 million dollars to help charities such as United Way, the Nationwide Children's Hospital, and the American Red Cross. So when we say that we are truly on your side, we are indeed on your side. So today's topic is actually the steps of life insurance protection. And there are a few disclaimers that I would like to review with you. Um, and if you are interested in actually reading some of these disclaimers, please see David and he can share the details with you. So when you look at the steps of life insurance protection, we have to consider what, and understand that tomorrow's needs will not be the same as today's needs. So how do we plan for life insurance today, uh, protection for today and for tomorrow? Especially if we're healthy today, we're insurable today, there's probably no better time to set up our life insurance needs. But we have to consider what I call major of life events. And it's almost like a life circle or a rites of passage. You know, in your 20s and 30s, you're single, you're young, but you're looking to get married. And then you start a family, you raise a family, you then become an empty nester and you retire. These are all rites of passage that many of us go through. But if we had to break down these life, um, life events, there may be a career change involved with that uh, or a loss of a loved one, maybe illness, unfortunately, or even a divorce or financial losses. So as we reflect over the steps of life insurance protection, take note of what's in your actual life cycle. What are some of the major events that you went to, especially when these major life events affect us financially? So there are financial obligations when it comes to these major events, good financial obligations, and sometimes it can be daunting. Like consider the first time that you bought your house, right? All the paperwork that you had to fill out, it was a great experience, and a buyer, but you have a mortgage. You may even have personal debt because of a car or other family needs, but you might also consider the fact that as your children become older, you have to do college planning, right? You have other financial commitments. And along the way, as you're planning for your children's education and you're 
looking and reviewing your personal debt, as well as maybe one of your biggest assets, which is your mortgage, right? You look at the fact that saving for retirement, you don't want to outlive your retirement. So during this time, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the amount of financial responsibility, but we work and earn a paycheck and pay for all these financial obligations. And in addition, we find time to fulfill our personal obligations to our family, our community, and even our employer. For most of us, this is time in our lives when our financial obligations are the greatest and our financial resources are actually the least. So we haven't had time to accumulate the wealth to cover the mortgage or our personal debt or to pay for our, our, our children's college or even to cover our retirement. So we are all in this stage where we might still be accumulating that wealth. And should something happen to us, how would our loved ones replace our income? And how would we pay our bills? So that's why the financial, uh, the actual steps to life insurance is really critical in knowing those major life events and those financial obligations to be extremely helpful in providing the next step. So when you're looking at the next step, how do we fund those needs? How do we fund those major life events and those financial obligations, right? It could be done through a couple of what we call life insurance contracts. There are contracts such as term life, whole life, universal life, index universal life, and variable life. But today I don't want to go over the details of these contracts. But just know that these products are, some are permanent in nature, and I would say the whole life through universal, index, and variable are permanent, and I mean permanent as in lasting the entire lifespan, while others are temporary, such as the first title, such as term life insured. Some of these contracts accumulate cash and others are more tax favored. So it's important that you uh, are able to, one, recognize those major events that you want to provide protection for, those financial obligations you have. And then the last step really would be the funding needs. What do we need to consider to cover those obligations? So how much life insurance do you need? How do we determine that need? We can look at an easy formula and write. Folks, if you can say one, two, three, then you can write down this formula because I think it's really important that you understand this information. What you really need to do is step one. You have to gather personal financial information. That's through statements. That's also through contracts, policies, anywhere where you say that it might have a policy number or a beneficiary. You got to find out that statement and make sure you set it aside because that's the first step in understanding how much need you have to have. The second is we're going to estimate the level of financial support that is actually needed. Are we going to replace your income, pay off your mortgage, pay off your debt, fund the children's education? You know, what do you specifically want to happen? It's your plan. It's your world. The ball is in your court. You can really customize it the way you want, but you have to know your goal. And it first starts with gathering that information. The third step, add up your existing financial resources. What's going to actually help you pay off this debt? It may not have to be life insurance, but you got to write down what assets you may have. Are you getting um, income from a second home? Um, are you receiving any type of um, wealth coming or accumulation coming your way, you have to know what financial resources are in place. And the fourth step in this formula is you have to subtract those resources from your financial support required to find your life insurance need. So basically, you're almost taking what you have minus what you don't have, and you're finding out what the replacement is. So let's look at the fact of how long you actually need uh, to have this financial obligation covered for your major life event. So some things you may consider are the things that we just discussed are being paid for the mortgage, right? The primary need for life insurance in the early years typically is for income replacement or paying off debt. Oftentimes when you're in your 30s, your 40s, and your 50s, you're looking at replacing things, right? Replacing that income, paying off debt, but you're also accumulating the wealth. 
when you are in your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, in the later years, the life insurance may be needed to provide money for the surviving spouse or during retirement to pay for a final expenses that may include probate or taxes. But your needs change, and it's important to review it because, again, we started our conversation today with major life events, and we all know those events don't remain the same. You Sometimes your kids are going to leave the house. They're not going to always be there. But these are major life events that you can make some adjustments. So let's take a look at an actual case study for today as we went over a lot of information already. So we're going to actually look at someone who's rather young and they're healthy and they're about 32 years old. Right? This is a hypothetical of a married professional, two young children, new home, a 30-year mortgage of $220,000, and an auto loan of $20,000. The personal debt is $5,000, and this is probably the smallest student loan I've ever seen. It's only $30,000, right? So uh, uh, I'm pretty sure we're all jealous of this uh, candidate here. But then we're also looking at the fact that their income is only $80,000. So you might have to reflect, you know, you were probably in this situation before. So what did you do, and how did you make those adjustments? It's actually going to take $280,000 to pay off these liabilities once you add them all up. And if you add final expenses, that's about $20,000. So now we have a total of two eighty dollars plus twenty dollars gives us $300,000. Simple math, folks. I know you got it, right? The most important financial item is the loss of income. What happens if this unfortunate event happens where the 32-year-old passes away? There's lots of, lots of income. So since that is what pays the bills and provides for the family, you have to discuss with your financial planner, which in this case is going to be David Thalen, who can help you decide what the best scenario is. And what he will say after looking at this individual, that it may take about $800,000 of sufficient income replacement. And when you add it all together, the total life insurance needed to pay off the debt, replace the income, is $1.1 million. So again, if I had to go back a couple slides, not to make it dizzy, we said how much. So in this case study, we just established how much we needed. What's the next step? Well, how long do we need it? So exactly how much and how long do we need it? At the end of 20 years, how long, right? The plan is to pay off all the debts except the mortgage. The mortgage we know in 20 years will be much lower. So we may not have to insure that entire amount. And we know that children are going to graduate from college. But this is all a, a vision and a plan that you have to review and understand that those life events that you have today are going to change tomorrow, especially in 20 years. But working with a planner such as David, he can help you kind of foresee what may happen over the next step, over the next five years, over the next 10 years, over the next 20 years. So it doesn't have to be such an overwhelming situation. It can be a support system working with him to help you establish how much and how long, especially for retirement savings. And your retirement shape, uh, savings should be increasing to help aid in these types of events. Even at the end of 30 years, the plan is to have the mortgage paid off and the children will be out and very sufficient for themselves. Retirement savings should be um, sufficient for retirement as, a, um, as you were a full-time um, employment. So these are all things that we need to consider that what happens over the next years, 5, 10, 20, 30, to make sure that you do not outlive your income and that you have the, the efficient amount of support that you need. So after the 30 you need to provide support for the surviving spouse during retirement. If the death of the spouse will decrease the benefits, we think of final, final expenses that may include the funeral costs, probate fees, attorney and accountant fees, taxes, or just to name a few, or even hospital bills. But you have to know your strategy. 
And again, I know I'm repeating myself, but I think it's helpful. You have to know that there's going to be major life events, and every time that you have one, you need to review your plan. So if we had to look at an actual diagram of how we would design this, because we also mentioned certain contracts that are temporary in nature, as well as certain contracts that have permanent coverage. Let's look at the diagram here. And it's almost like a staircase. So if we layered coverage, a stair step, different life insurance policies to provide for your needs during different phases in your life, this might be a good fit for you. In this example, we have a foundation of $100,000 of coverage. Now this $100,000 of coverage, this is meant for a lifetime coverage. So it's also what we call permanent coverage. A variety of cash value type products, as I mentioned before, may be used. Whole life, universal life, index UL, or index universal life, not to use abbreviations, and a variable universal life. This layer may provide for final expenses too. If we look a step up, the next layer is about $500,000, and that's 30-year level term policy. This is meant to provide for life insurance protection, of course, for the next 30 years. As we said, how much and how long, we looked at 30 years, we looked at 20 years. And we know by the end of 30 years, things are going to change. Children will be out of the house. The house will be paid for. You are self-sufficient, debt eliminated. Now, the first 20 years, what we may need right away. For the first 20 years, the top layer is $500,000 of 20 year level term that provides protection until the children are mostly grown and in college. But look, with the coverage that we provided, we're actually doing what we said at the very beginning with this case study. We have a 32 year old who really needed about $1.1 million, but because we were able to step um, the coverage and layer it, they did not have to have that full coverage the entire time. Again, for the first 20 years, there's a total of $1.1 million of life insurance coverage. As life events change, for 10 years following there, it's only $600,000 of coverage. And at the end of 30 years, there's only $100,000 of coverage. Now, if we had to compare contracts with each other, how much does this cost? Because you're probably wondering, all right, Candace, get to the point. How much does it cost? Well, Based on a 32-year-old male, best rate, this is the comparison that we see. So let's look at this chart. If we look at the illustration, the difference between purchasing a single whole life policy for $1.1 million, because that's what we said the full need was, versus using a life insurance policy and layering the approaches, everyone's situation will be different, though. But this is what we find. The whole life policy in this example has an annual premium of $10,015. That means they're paying premium every single year, $10,015. But the coverage is $1.1 million. And remember, this whole life policy builds cash value, which is the initial life insurance death benefit we needed, as we said before. By using multiple insurance products, I want to show you how we save money, right? and how it becomes a little bit more cost effective. Layering them to cover the life insurance needs during the phases of the insurance life cycle, there is 1.1 million of death benefit for the first 20 years, and the premium's only 1,848. Because remember, that is the term insurance for 20 years. That premium of $8,167 is less than the whole life premium. So if you add the term insurance and the UL contract, you're actually saving about $8,000, making this approach more affordable for those who have tight budgets and may want to save. That's right, folks. I know what happens next on the next slide. Save. Save their money elsewhere. So if we're able to save you money elsewhere, where if I was able to save you $8,167, what would you do with it? Would you set up an emergency fund that you've always wanted to do? Would you quickly pay down your debt, purchase long-term care, purchase insurance for the spouse? These are all things that you may want to consider. So this is the what ifs. 
things don't always go as planned. So we need to protect what we call in the industry your insurability. There's really no day but today. But you have to qualify. If life insurance coverage is needed longer than originally anticipated, insurability can be protected by using a term policy that offers conversion options, right? The, cover the conversion feature allows you to convert the term coverage to permanent life insurance without evidence of insurability. So even if you look at that layering approach that we did earlier with the term insurance, that term insurance has what I just mentioned, a conversion feature. And it's nice because you can use that term policy with the rate that you have today while you're young, healthy, and beautiful, and get actual permanent coverage. Our goal is to make sure that you qualify. With all of these options, you have to make sure you qualify. So let's review the steps to life insurance protection as we bring things to close. Let's summarize. First, we need to determine how much life insurance you need. There is a number out there, but remember, that we are planning not only for today's needs, but what happens tomorrow? Let's look at a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan, a 30-year plan. You don't have to do this alone. There are great consultants out there such as uh, Dave Valen to help you plan for this. If you look at the second step, determine how long we need the coverage. As we discussed, our needs changes. So what you have today and what you need today is not necessarily what you need tomorrow. Just think about it. Do you still wear the same clothes that you wore in the 80s? No, you don't. You changed. So, so does your life when it comes to major events. The third step, determine the appropriate products to provide the needed coverage for the appropriate length of time and periods in your life. So there's going to be a time that you can make sure that the need, you don't outlive it. And there is an application process. You have to complete paperwork with these types of plans. But the most important thing I want to leave with you when I say complete that paperwork, we want to make sure that you qualify. Every plan is different. Every contract is different. Every company has different needs and what they're looking for. But that's what's good about working with a financial planner. They can help you find the carrier and help you qualify. Last but not least, we have to review and update. Be sure that you are regularly reviewing your life insurance policies and the situation. These are the five steps when it comes to planning for life insurance protection. I hope you realize that Nationwide is truly on your side and that there's no really day but today that you should definitely consider looking at your plans today because you're younger, you're healthier, you're better today. There's lots of needs that can be met, but it starts with a conversation. I do appreciate your time. I'm so excited that I was able to share this evening with you, and I'd like to hand over the mic to Dave.